Hi, church. In just a few moments, Kurt Williams, one of our elders here at OP Church, is going to be uh, sharing with you two very important announcements. But before um, I give him that opportunity, I just want to say uh, that I love our shepherds at this church. Um, I hope that you're praying for them. We are blessed to have uh, these different men serving us. If you don't know who our elders are, uh, they're Jim Bowman, Jim Unruh, uh, Jim Trotter, who uh, is is on the mend, um, been dealing with um, different health issues, uh, so keep him definitely in your prayers right now. Uh, Jesse Salmon, uh, Kurt Williams, Dennis O'Dell. And uh, just recently, Jim Vickers uh, was also one of our elders, uh, but after uh, I believe about 17 years, he uh, decided to uh, retire from that. Um, so he's uh, throwing a party right now because he doesn't have to go to meetings anymore. Uh, but uh, we miss him. Uh, I just want you to pray for our shepherds. Uh, they are good men who love this church and who desperately want to follow uh, the convictions that they feel uh, deep in their heart and the moving of the Holy Spirit uh, within this church. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kurt Williams and let him share uh, these very important announcements. Hey, I have two announcements that I wanted to share with you. We will be targeting uh, mid to late October to resume meeting in the building, and ideally uh, October 18th. We want you to know that is contingent on the status of COVID-D and, of course, the uh, recommendations of our uh, local area. We're targeting having an early a cappella service and our later instrumental service, although the times may be adjusted because we don't have Bible class. Uh, there will be further information on what we need from each of you to make sure we do everything we can to provide the safest and best experience for all. We will not be offering uh, Sunday morning Bible cl classes at this time, although we will continue to offer some of the Bible classes we have been during the week. Secondly, in Ephesians 4, Paul shared that Jesus gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We want everyone to attain the whole measure of Christ. And later in that same section of text, Paul says, from Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself in love as each part does its work. The language of the Bible is that everyone has a part and if we do each do our part, the church is built up and edified. And when God blesses his children with gifts and talents, he desires them to be used to build up his church. There is no better fulfillment church-wide and personally than we use what God has given us to bless others. Some of these gifts and talents are public and some of them happen behind the scenes, but all God-honoring. And God has so blessed this church, and as leaders, we've been blessed to see this and experience this. Thank you. Two questions that we wrestle with is, are we using all of our missional partners in the way that God has purposed and gifted? And if not, what effect does that have on the church and God's mission? That wrestling has been in the form of seeking above all to follow God's leading while also recognizing that change is hard on his followers. Paul writes after listing many gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them each just as he has determined. We have asked ourselves, are we quenching the spirit? We have also asked, are everyone's gifts and talents being used to the fullest? church-wide and personally. The elders of the OP Church believe all of our faithful missional partners should be able to fully participate in our worship, to serve and to build up the church as they are gifted. Therefore, the elders have determined that when we start meeting again in the building in October, we'll also begin using the gifts of uh, any of our 
faithful Christian women who desire to serve at both services. And this is a change for our a cappella service that we said one day would happen, and we believe now is the right time. We have prayerfully waited to make this change. We know that for some of you, the change is long overdue, and we appreciate your patience. We also know that for some of you, this will be difficult, but please give us the opportunity to share some things that we hope will help in the understanding of why we believe God is calling the OP Church in this direction. This Sunday, Gilbert will begin a new sermon series where he will take us on a journey through the scriptures, helping us to better understand why we are convinced that this change is both biblically grounded and missionally appropriate thing to do at this time. We'd ask you to listen to these sermons with an open mind, a humble heart, and as always, we will be available to discuss any questions you may have. I also want to uh, note that when we do re-enter the building, our early service will remain a cappella. We want to close with a couple of scriptures that share two important results of what God did through Jesus for all of, it, all of us. Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the promised spirit came. And when that happened, Peter addressed the crowd by quoting the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will bring dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Acts chapter 2. 17 and 18. And the second verse, you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for you are all, you are all baptized into Christ. You have been clothed with yourselves with Christ, and there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ. We love you, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.